holding this in one hand, again I've got the laser measure and the in one hand, I pull out my camera, which I've had in my pocket. I step back here to do my picture of the rear of the house. At the same time, I'm noticing that there is a deck, and I'm also noticing that there is an alleyway back here. Okay, there's also a small patio. Now, on some inspections, I would measure the deck and the patio. This particular client doesn't care, and so I'm not going to waste my time doing it. I just know that the patio's there and the deck's there. Here's the really cool thing about Phoenix Mobile. The same thing is true about all the mode. I don't have to finish my sketch before I can start marking amenities. So right now, I'm going to jump out of the sketch, and I'm going to jump into the improvement section. Now keep in mind, when I say the improvement section, we're actually in the report itself. Now granted, it's on the tablet, but I'm in the appraisal report, the 1004 UAD form. I go right to the improvement section where it talks about the amenities. I'm going to click on here that it has both a deck and a patio. And you'll notice I'm not typing those out. I'm actually using the quick list. Again, Phoenix Mobile, all the mode, the exact same way. You're not going to have to type out anything just simply have to select the most common responses. You can type things out if you get to the point that, oh gee, there's a gazebo here. I've never done a gazebo before. You can use the, the typing pad and actually type that out as well. But it's really easy to use those quick lists to just, just uh, um, fill in those particular fields as you go. Okay. So remember this is a, uh, a shed here that we want to measure off. Now I'm going to show you something that's kind of interesting here. As you can see down on that corner, you've got a, a door jam that sticks out further than the edge of the shed. So if I measured this across here, there's no way to hit the end of that shed. All I can hit is that door jam. And that's going to that's gonna do me an injustice because I'm not going to get the full length of that shed. Here's an interesting thing that you can do, and I did it on the front again, but I want to show you again. I've got a fence behind me, okay? Utilize the objects that you have. So if I click on this and actually shoot behind the shed back to that fence, if you can kind of see where that uh, red dot is, I'm going to shoot past the shed, and then I'm going to hit the minus sign, go to the end of the shed, and click the fence again, hit the equal sign, and now I know that that shed is 13 and a half feet. Okay? Here's the other thing that you can do. The other way you can do it is to utilize the plus sign. Okay? It's kind of hard on this one because there's really not much room on the other side of that door and you could probably just do it in your head, but for purposes of demonstration, I'm actually going to hit that jam right there, that door jam that's sticking out, okay? In fact, let's do it this way. I'm going to hit this side of the door jam, okay? So I'm going to click on that, which is about halfway, but that's about nine feet, okay? Now I'm going to hit the plus sign. And now I'm going to go the opposite direction. So now I'm on the edge of the shed going backward, then I hit equals, and I get the same measurement that I had as if I hit the fence and come back, or as if I had, had gone from the inside to the inside. Now, one, one other thing I'm going to show you. If I don't uh, ruin this in the process. Well, let's do it this way. The, nice thing, the, the other nice thing you can do, and this particularly works well in garages, when you have the garage door open, you can actually use the Pythagorean theorem, which is the a squared plus b squared equals c squared, if you remember your whole geometry classes. And you can actually go to the inside of the garage. So I'm going to click here, and I'm actually going to go like this into the inside of the garage. I still get the same measurement. Because if you go at a diagonal from the side, you're going to get the exact same measurement as if you go to the edge as well. So that's the other thing I use as well when the garage door is open. I can just shoot to the inside of the garage, and I don't have to try to find the edge of the side. Now, a lot of people complain about using laser measures because they say to themselves, well, I just can't find anything to shoot off of. I saw a post the other day on the internet that said, I can't use a laser measure in my, ha in my area because there's no edges to any of the houses. And I asked this person, well, what kind of houses are you? Are, do you have? And she said, mostly metal and vinyl and wood siding. Well, obviously, most areas have vinyl, metal, and wood siding. You just have to learn how to, how to bounce off of the edge of the metal siding or the vinyl siding or the wood siding. That wrap that goes on the corner, and I can't show you on this one because it's not on this house, but if you can bounce off of the edge of those sidings, there's really never a wall that I've met that I couldn't measure some way, either shooting past it, either adding something in the middle, or shooting off of the edge of the corner 
once you get used to it, you'll find that it's very, very easy to do, okay? So I've already noted all the amenities here. That's the nice thing is I can go back and forth between the sketch and the amenities or the improvement section, and I've done that now. So I've got the alley marked, I've got the deck marked, I've got the shed marked. Actually, I don't think I marked the shed because I didn't measure the other side. So we're 13 and a half by 18, okay? So 13 and a half by 18, and now I'm just going to label it as a shed. Okay, I, I, do, I define it as a non-calculable area because this is not GLA and I just define it as a shed so that when I get back to the office, there it is in my sketch and I don't have to resketch when I get back. So, we've got everything out here. There's no sprinkler systems. Um, I did not know that there, was a, uh, that there was a fence, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and just make sure that I put on there that there is a fence. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit the inside. Okay, once we have the shell, built for the house, it's very, very easy to put the interior rooms in. Now, some appraisers will actually draw the interior walls. Some of them will actually put symbols in for fireplaces and sinks and appliances and that kind of a thing. And you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, in my estimation, it's not really worth doing because all you need to do is basically place the rooms so that you know where they are on the sketch. And so I, I take the easy way out. Uh, I want to get in and out as quickly as I can, that way I can move on to the next assignment. So what I'm looking at now is I'm saying, okay, we've got a living room here. So what I'm going to do is pull this up and actually click on the living room and place it right there. We've got a dining room here. I put the dining room there, and I've got a kitchen here. So I put the kitchen there, okay? In the meantime, I'm going to pull this out of my pocket again, and I'm going to take my pictures. So there we've got the kitchen. Here we've got the living room, taking note that there used to be a wood stove here, and there's not now. So here's the other nice thing. In both Ola Mode and Phoenix Mobile, you can go in and actually make handwritten notes. So I'm going to go in here and take a note and actually put in here that there used to be a wood stove that is no longer here. And I can actually just draw this out just like you would on a chalkboard. And then I've got that note. So I'm going to take a picture here of the dining room, and then we're just going to go through the house here. I'm obviously paying attention. I'm doing this quick for the camera, but I would pay attention as I go through as to the condition of the home. What are the walls made of? Is it lath and plaster or is it sheetrock? We're going to come through here and take a picture of the bathroom. I already know it's winterized, so I'm not even going to try the water and, and try the toilet to make sure that it works. Um, obviously, those things are not going to work when it's winterized. I'm taking note that the floor is in deplorable condition, so I'm going to take not only a picture of the bedroom here, but also take a picture of the floor that has not been refinished. Got a walk-in closet back here, so I'm just going to mark on here bedroom and bathroom and go through that process. Now you can continue throughout the house and basically do that same thing, but I'm going to skip ahead to as if I had already done the upstairs and the downstairs. By the way, both Phoenix Mobile and all the mode will allow you to take the sketch that you made on the top floor and if you have a similar bottom floor you can actually copy it and paste it and call it a basement and then you can change the walls let's say one has a bay window on the top floor but you don't have a bay window on the basement you can actually delete that bay window out as you go the goal here is that when you get done with the inspection you can put this thing back in the cloud download it back to your um, back to your software back at the office and you don't have to touch that thing again it's all ready to go. You can already start on the grid, start making the adjustments, and go to town. That's where the time savings really comes in. Is it a little bit more cumbersome to do this in the field? Sure. I could probably do this inspection with a paper and pencil in probably 20 minutes. Uh, it's going to take me about 25 minutes to do this on the tablet. The real time savings is I don't have to redraw that when I get back to the office. I don't have to make notes again when I get back to the office. For example, when I noted that there was a shed, that there was a deck, that there was a patio, that's already in the, in the software. I don't have to retype those things from my handwritten notes. That's really where the time savings comes in when you do mobile appraisal.